Psalms 55 and verse 22. We went and seen also that new movie, I Am Not Ashamed, last night. If you have not seen it, it's a story about Columbine High School. And it's a tearjerker, I'm just telling you. Uh, but uh, it's a good movie. Amen. So uh, uh, if you want to go see a good movie, that's a good one to see. Psalms 55 verse 22, it says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. One more time. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be to be moved. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for everything, Father God, that you're doing, everything that you've done, what you're going to do, Father God, still in this place. I pray that your Holy Spirit shall move in this place and shall and just touch and take care and just minister, Father. Let the words come out of my mouth flow fluently, and Father God, uh, let, it, uh, let it go how you would see fit. And uh, let your Holy Spirit touch each and every heart. Let us all leave here better than we came and receive what you'd have us to receive. Use me again, Father, please, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You guys may be seated. I mean, the past, if I, if I had to title this message, it's, what is eating you? Everybody say that. What, look at your neighbor and say, what, what's eating you? What's eating you? I mean, t- today, this morning, it'll probably be, uh, I've been in this sermon series, whether you guys know it or not, for a while now, uh, uh, talking about the, the ways that the devil, you know, we talked about how we have power over the enemy and we have dominion over the earth, and uh, we've talked about ways that the devil tries to come against us and distract us from following him. He tries to come against us and turn us from a different way. We've talked about depression. Uh, We've talked about last week about negative words. You guys remember that? Uh, About negative words, speaking negativity and being negative. Well, today we're going to talk about something different, but it's big, and we're going to hopefully, we're going to get down to a root cause of this, and, and it may even be named the same thing, it may be completely the same thing, but, but we're going to talk about anxiety, amen? You ever seen somebody who's having like pan, uh, anxiety attacks or panic attacks or whatever? Now, I'm going to be honest, okay? Now, there may be some medical issues that could cause that. I'm not going to, uh, for all of you healthcare people, okay, there may be some like that. But I'm the type of guy, I'm kind of hardcore sometimes, okay? If I see my son and he's looking at me and he's acting, uh, or if I seen somebody, I had a youth student one time. We took a trip to, uh, to uh, Kings Island. And on the way back home, uh, <laughs> we stopped at a gas station there in Jeffersonville. And uh, she, was, she was outside the van. We went in and got something come out. And she said she was having a panic attack. She was real anxious or something. And my, my first thought, okay, because I'm kind of diehard, you know. You know, I'm the type of kid that makes my boy play with a broken arm, baseball, and all that kind of stuff, you know. My first thought was like, get up, you know. <laughs> I'm like, come on. You know, that, that's my first thought. And it's easy for people, amen, who may not struggle with that to be that way. Okay, we all have our faults, we all have our things that we struggle with, we all have our failures, we all have our weaknesses. My weaknesses may not be your weaknesses, but some people, amen, amen, I want to focus on the fact of the devil trying to fight you to be anxious. Now, there may be some medical terms where some chemical imbalances can cause that. I still believe God can heal that too, but I want to emphasize on the devil trying to fight you with this anxiety, a spiritual attack attack of it to try to distract you and steer your focus away from God. And you may struggle with that, but some of the rest of us may not struggle with it. But I may struggle in areas that you may not. Amen? There's a story that was told I read on the internet the other day. It was about about this boy. He came home, and on the way home, there there was this big black dog. He, he came across in the way, and uh, uh, it, scared, it scared him. He thought that he seen a bear, uh, apparently, or, or a dog or whatever, or, and he claimed it was a bear, whatever. He went home, told his mom, and his mom's like, ah, you know. His dad come home and told his dad, like, I seen a bear on the way home. And his dad told him, he said, son, go up to your room. 
because, you know, he knew better, you know, his dad did. He said, son, go up to your room, and I want you to stay up there and pray till the Lord tell, speaks to you and talks to you about your line. So he was up there for a while, and finally he comes down, and the dad says, son, the Lord speak to you uh, about your line? He said, yeah. He's like, what did he say to you? He said, God told me the first time he seen that dog, he thought it was a bear, too. <laughs> Now, that's a funny story, but that's honestly, you know, if he actually seen the dog and thought it was a bear, that's the way that we live sometimes. Amen? It's, there's some people. I, 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 my mom, my mom, she would watch him rescue 911 shows when, when I was younger. You remember them? They ain't on no more, thank goodness. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, I would watch them, it'd be like Tuesdays and Thursdays maybe, or maybe just Tuesday nights, and one time, one time somebody fell out of the back of the truck because a tailgate came down, there went my riding in the back of the truck days, uh, you know, uh, with, uh, with no uh, camper top, you know, heaven forbid something showed up on Rescue 911, a chance out of one million would happen, and she wouldn't let us, want us to do it anymore because... It could happen. You know, you have people who don't, you have grandmas and moms and dads who don't let their kids climb up in trees and things because they've heard of bad stories about kids falling out. How many of you, when you was a kid, climbed a tree? Okay, I did. We, we all have done stuff. Things can happen. Okay, now, you guys remember our theme scripture. It says, for the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And what I want to do, I want to get down, and it may be exactly the same thing. If it is not the same thing, it is the root cause of anxiety. And you know what that is? Fear. Living in fear. Living in fear. See, so many times, I mean, just like that boy, he may have seen that dog and automatically thought it was a bear. A lot of times our perception of things and our view of things, we may see it, it may literally be one way in one thing, and, but we see it a totally different way because we're living in fear. Did you guys know, and I'm a firm believer, that we can open the door for fear to operate in our lives? What better message to preach around Halloween time? Amen. Now, you guys can throw tomatoes at me if you want, I guess. But if you're watching scary movies that make you scared and jumpy, and then you go outside and you're a little scared because you just watched Jason slaughter about 50 people at, about an hour ago in a movie, what have you done? You've opened the door for, to operate, uh, for the devil to operate in fear in your life. It's why we got to be careful what we watch, what we listen to. And we're, we all do it. We all do it in some way, shape, or form. Maybe not in movies, maybe something else. But uh, we, we open the door for the devil to fight us. And then, we wonder, <laughs> then, we, then we wonder why we're in the shape we're in a lot of times. If you struggle with pornography and things like that, guess what? You may need to watch the movies you watch. You may need to watch what you're clicking on on the internet and things like that. Because it adds temptation. You need, may need to watch your conversation and what you talk uh, uh, about around your friends and around your family. If you will, turn with me to your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4. I want you guys to really zone into this because this, this is good stuff this morning. Amen. Philippians chapter 4. I'll try not to keep you too long, but let's try to get zoned in, guys. Let's try to get zoned in. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. It says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. Verse 7. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ. Amen. That first part, be careful for nothing. I think there is a, another version, maybe the NIV or something that says, be anxious for nothing. Don't be fearful for anything. Amen. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Don't be afraid that you're not going to have food to eat. Don't be afraid of the clothes. Don't be afraid of you having a lost job. See, some of us may put ourselves in bad situations because we're operating in fear instead of God. Amen. The way it gets tough, how many of you have, uh, you know, there's times maybe a job may come up. A job may come up. Maybe God don't want you to take that job, but you take it because 
out of fear of what, I mean, of course we all need money to operate, amen? The world revolves, the world, you have to, you have, to have money to live. But we need to make sure that we're following Christ in every way, shape, and form in everything that we do. Because sometimes when we get in our own self, because we're operating out of fear, we can make bad decisions. Maybe if you would have turned that job down the very next day, God would have offered you a job somewhere else. Now, I'm not saying for you all to go quit your job. I'm saying follow the Lord. Amen? Follow the Lord and not yourself. But with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Uh, amen. The peace of God. Let me tell you something. When you're going through things and when you're going through the trials of the enemy, it's going to feel real. It's going to feel very real. It's going to seem abnormal to go against what you're feeling. It's going to feel abnormal. But the peace of God that passes all understanding, see, that's not normal. That peace of God is not normal. Amen. And that peace of God, amen, we're not going to understand it. We're not going to understand how we can be at peace when we've just lost our job. Amen. And our car broke down and we're running out of food for the baby and stuff. It's not going to be understanding to us how we can still have peace when things are operating like that. But it says, it shall keep your heart and minds through Jesus Christ. Some of us may be struggling through things and in things that not very many people know in situations and decisions that are coming up and that we need to make and, and uh, that we're walking through. Amen. But the peace of God that passes all understanding will come and it can rest upon you. Amen. Be careful for nothing. Don't be anxious for anything. Well, Pastor Brad, that's easy to say. You're not walking in my shoes. Well, no, I'm not. And I may be glad that I'm not. Amen? I've got enough problems of my own. I'm thankful you ain't walking in some of my shoes. See, the thing is, it seems like a lot of times uh, that people, that they're living just a hunky-dory life, like everything is okay, but everyone in this sanctuary this morning has something probably that troubles them. Something that they could say maybe that they're going through or, or looking down the future that they could get worried about. Every one of us. There is nothing that you go through that is not common to man. See, the devil wants you to think that nobody else in this world has went through what you're going through. Guess what? You're dead wrong. You're dead wrong. The peace of God. The peace of God that passes all understanding. It's going to keep my heart. Amen? It's going to keep my heart. I went three and a half years at Toyota wondering or not knowing, you know, what... If I would get hired, when I would get hired, what shift I would be on. And the Lord's working it out. I have peace. See, see peace. When you have the peace of God, the waves can still crash down around you. Because, see, bad comes to the righteous and the unrighteous. You guys heard me say it many, many times. The bad's going to come. But the peace of God sustains you and keeps you when the bad comes. Amen. What is anxiety? Anxiety is distress or uneasiness of mind caused by fear uh, of damage or misfortune. What's some synonyms for anxiety? Things, words that mean the same thing. Fear. Worry. Disquiet. What's it mean to operate out of fear? What's it mean? If you break it down, the letters in fear, F-E-A-R, fear, uh, uh, fear, false evidence appearing real. Just like that boy, he may have seen the dog, he's seen a bear. Too many times, amen, when we're going through situations in life, amen, when the devil comes against us, he wants to magnify the problem and make you feel like there is no way out. Make you feel like that you can't make it. Make you feel like that you can't take anything more. Amen, when the kids are going nuts oh, in the car and you've had it up to here, amen, the devil would love for you to think you cannot, if they even so much as rattle a piece of change in their pocket, you're going to knock them outside the car. Amen, that's what the devil would like for you to think, amen? 
But guess what? I had the peace of God. And it shall sustain my heart. When we're operating out of fear, guess what? Fear is immobilizing. What happens when people operate out of fear? Amen. They want to seclude themselves. How many times have I talked about secluding yourself away from people? It is not good when you start separating yourself off away from people unless it is for a time of prayer and a time of fasting. Other than that, it is not good. What is our purpose? What is the great commission? It is to spread the good news. It's hard to do it if we don't ever connect with people. Amen. I'm a firm believer in connection, uh, connections with people. One of our three things is unity. You can't have unity if you don't ever get around nobody or talk to nobody or send anybody a letter or an email or something. You can't have that. But fear, amen, when you get scared of something, you know, what, what, do you, what happens when somebody... Listen, now, I'm going to be completely honest here. I absolutely love scaring my wife and kids. Love it. Absolutely love it. And Ansley. Ansley's like, I love it. She'll come over to the house. She might, she, she's even scared to walk through. <laughs> <laughs> walk around because you never know. Uh, one of me or the boys could pop out from anywhere. You know, she could walk by the steps and I could come out barking like a dog from the steps or something. You know, and I absolutely love it. But what happens when somebody scares you? Well, you, you could get hurt, but you 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 don't want to move. You want to just. I had a guy, one of the team leaders this week, scared me to death at work. Scared me to death. They have these benches where where they bring engines in and they turn the the crank in them or whatever and rev them up, make it sound like an engine, and they listen to it, see if anything's loose. But you're kind of secluded in them. And uh, I, I I was in there with another guy, and one of the team leaders walked up behind me, and he was like, like that and I was like and I even turned around and seen him before he did it and I was like (laughs) you know I mean my hands was up like that and it's immobilizing you don't know what to do you want to just stand still see it's the same thing with when the devil when he it's immobilizing to our spiritual life when there's fear there well I'm afraid so and so is not going to like me So what do we do? We don't go talk to them. It immobilizes us. I'm afraid of what people will think. So what do we do? We don't do it. It immobilizes us. I'm afraid to go up front and lift my hands during praise and worship because I'm afraid I'll look stupid. What's that do? Afraid, fear. It immobilizes us. How can we operate? See, see. Everything with the devil is opposite of the Lord. See, with Jesus, there's liberty and freedom. There's order, but there's liberty and freedom. But with the devil, there is fear and immobilization. See, God wants to make you mobile. The devil wants to make you immobile. What else does fear do? Fear makes you lose the ability to make decisions. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to make the wrong one. I, I'm, I'm afraid that we're going to spend too much money on this and not have enough money to, to uh, maybe a bill will pop up or something I don't know, uh, know of. I, I, I'm afraid to pay that person's electric bill. I'm afraid to, 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 uh, to, to, uh, to get so-and-so uh, a new dress or something. Because what if something was to pop up and I ain't got the money for it? You lose the ability to make decisions. Also, when you operate out of fear, guess what? Your peace of mind is not there. You don't have the peace that passes all understanding. I mean, you're not at peace anymore. When people's having anxiety attacks, it's like they're all over their self. Amen? They, am, I, am I right, Miss K? I mean, you've probably seen it. They're like all over their self. They cannot focus. Right? They're, they're, they're worried and they're stressed out. Not, you know, just... Maybe not even knowing why, but they're just worried and stressed out. The peace is gone. 
I'm hitting somebody maybe home here. How many of you sometimes is just can't, can't focus? Amen? It seems scatterbrained sometimes. I've been there. Amen? I've been there. I've been to the place to where everything just seems to be, I mean, you're still going through doing what you need to do, but it's like you can't hone in and focus on what you need to. Amen? You can't hone in and focus on God and what God is saying. It's like everything's just... We were shopping at the mall yesterday, and I'm telling you, if my kids said, or me, I was in there too, said, hey, chair, or hey, mom, one time, they said it at least 50 during the day. And, uh, and Charity, I was, like, I was like, what's wrong with you? I was like, you're like scatterbrained or whatever. You know, you'd be talking to her, and she just... Like, she just walk off. <laughs> and I was like, what's, what's wrong with you? But see, that's the way the devil comes. He launches things. And it could even be just a small, minor thing. But launches a thought, maybe. And you, you have to process it and, and, and work through it or something. And then he'll, he'll hit you with something else. And it could be just a, but you take just little bitty things. And you take a blue million of them coming at you. And it is like one big heavy thing just laying on you. And it's like you're just, you're just you can't focus. It's like, uh, uh, you know, and you don't know where to go, what to turn. You can't make decisions. You're just standing in there. And when you do move, it ain't in necessarily a way that you may, you don't know for sure that's the right way to go. Maybe uh, you may just wander around and saner around. You ever seen somebody saner? That's maybe a Kentucky term, just saner around. You know, but that's what happens when we operate out of fear and anxiety. That's what the devil he wants. Amen. He takes our peace of mind, our decisions. We can't make them. We 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 can't. Uh, if if we if we do move, it's in a one track mind. Amen. If we do move, it's in a one track mind in what we think that we need to do. Not necessarily not what God wants us to do, but where we think we need to go. You finally just shut down. And say, <laughs> I'm walking to the car. <laughs> Amen. And when we operate out of fear, we're not walking in the true power that God's gave us. See, if the devil can't have your salvation, he'll try to hold you back and restrict you down till he does get your salvation. And he'll try to hinder you in every way, shape, and form that he can. 2 Timothy 1, through 1, and 1 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but what? Of power and of love and of a what? Sound mind. Our mind being sounded, being focused, being grounded. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I struggle with that sometimes. I have my times where I have to pray. I pray every day maybe that God will give me a sound mind and renew my mind or renew it every time that it needs it. Amen. Because I want the soundness. I want that. When we have a sound mind, that's, that's the, the, the peace of God's there. That's what gives us that sound mind. It's the peace that passes all understanding. There was like a little funny thing that I read on the internet. It says, when you feel stressed out, when, anyone, when everyone seems to be leaving you, when the world seems to be fading away in the mist, please let me know. I will take you to the eye specialist for a checkup. I read something else that says, what is stress? Stress is when you wake up screaming and you realize you haven't fallen asleep yet. <laughs> Come on, we've all been there. Amen? We've all been there. All of us. Turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, we're going to start at verse 25. Pastor Brad, how do we do it? How do we do it? Listen, we all struggle with it. How do we, how do we get to the place to where... We have that peace and operate in it. And we got to step out in faith. That's what we got to do. How, 
how do we walk and not be anxious? Because there are so many things that can come up. It could be lost family members. It could be wh- what, uh, you know, our jobs. It could be what's coming up, you know, in the next week. It could be finances. It could be anything. Amen. But how do we get past it? we got to step out in faith. Verse 25, it says, Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Don't give thought to your life. Amen. What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not life more than meat and the body than raiment? Than raiment. Raiment is clothes. Amen. Is not our life more valuable than what we eat and drink and clothes to God? Do you think God is going to be more focused on whether you live or die or what you're wearing and drinking and eating? Amen. Of course, if you don't have food and drink, you're going to die. Okay? Now, is God a God that's going to let you die? See, see, we got to understand God is big enough to take hold of us. He's big enough to keep us. If he was big enough to create you in your mother's womb, he's big enough to keep you through the life that's coming on, that you're going through. Man, there is no situation that is big, too big for my God to hold me in. And we got to understand that. Amen. I've come to the conclusion before. You know, the Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. But do you realize if you worry even the slightest bit what you're worrying, the worrying part of it, you're not truly trusting in God if you're worrying. Think about that. Some of you may have worried about stuff this morning. We all do it. Every single one of us. But you see how there's always room for us to work and to, to, to get better. Because, you know, we all worry about stuff along the time. But when we're worrying, we're not fully trusting in God. He's big enough to keep us. Verse 26, it says, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heart, heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? The fowls of the air, that you know, they don't get out, they don't work a job, they don't do, they, they don't get out and witness to people and work for God. They don't do that. They don't sow, they don't reap, they fly around and gather food and gather twigs to make their homes. What else are they good for? Unless it's like quail and you shoot them and eat them. What else are they good for? But still yet, our Heavenly Father makes sure that there's food for their, them there to eat. And if he'll do that for somebody, for things that don't reap or sow, how much more is he going to take care of us? How much more? He gives them food and they don't do nothing. Amen? But be pissed a lot of times. We got a bird's nest up in the top of one of our pillars on our house, you know, and they, they don't do nothing except my destruction. And what happens? What happens? The Lord still makes sure they have food. If he'll do that for them, we are children of God. How much more will he take care of us and feed us? Well, Pastor Brad, you don't understand. You don't understand. I went three days without having a full course meal. You know, we've had to eat some beans and beans and cornbread for three meals straight. Do you call that taking care? You got some food, don't you? Yeah. Amen. You got some food. See, some people, they don't want to help themselves. And I'm going to try not to get too deep on this, amen. Some people, they don't want to help themselves. They want to live off the system and other people helping them all the time. There's this woman on my Facebook. I blocked her yesterday. Never messaged me for anything except for to ask for food or something. Never, never to, hey, hey, Brad, how are you? Or never, hey, where's your church at? I'd like to come see. Always, always, always. We're in a bad shape. We have no car, do you know, of a food pantry. Always something. Always something. I've tried to get a job, but nobody's hiring. And, and we're not the only church. She does that to more than one. But even still, you got to help yourself. Amen. 
we got to have that faith walk, amen, and operate in God. And He will let the peace that passes all understanding, amen, walk in us, amen. And if He'll take care of the birds of the air, He will take care of you. Even better. Now listen, I'm all about help. I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to help people. But there's some people... You can't help them. Amen. There's some people, I, I want to specify that. I don't want you guys to think I'm not a good heart, but you guys know the type. Amen. I, I'm, I'm, the Lord touches me to help people, and I will help them. But there's some people you can help them and 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 help them help them help them. And it's still, gimme, 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 gimme. They don't never try to get them out of the spot, get out of the spot to where they need help. See, I just, you may think I'm weird, but I have the mentality that God will bring you out of that spot. We've all, I've been to the place to where I've needed help. My dad has many times stepped in and helped me pay things. and uh, He gave us a car one year for Christmas. He's bought us groceries, took us out to eat. Many times, me and my wife has needed help. And, and through compassion, people has helped us. And a lot of it we cause ourselves. But we always been to the place to where we was trying. Amen. We wanted to get out of where we was at. I just wanted to specify that. Your pastor does have a heart. Verse 27, it says, Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to your stature? You worrying, can it, can it do anything? It just makes it worse. Amen? You griping, complaining, worrying, it just makes the situation worse. You sitting there, and I, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I, I'm bad. You guys have heard it say me before, uh, say it before. I'm bad. It's my first reaction is I want to blow up. <laughs> You know, and usually it's on charity. And me blowing up on charity, it ain't going to help nothing at all. <laughs> See, as you go through this Christian walk, you learn things. You know, you learn things. Me getting aggravated and blowing up at the kids all the time over some things they do, it ain't going to help the stuff. <laughs> we got to make sure that we operate out of love. But when we're worrying about things, it's not going to help. We can't, it's not going to bring us food. It's not going to bring us clothes. And why take... And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Amen. Once again, you have these lilies of the field. They don't work. They don't do anything, but God clothes them. He makes them beautiful. If he's going to do that, amen. See, the grass of the field, they used to use, um, I forget what I was reading, but they used to take the grass, uh, I think, uh, and uh, for altars or, for, or, uh, uh, or, or like places to cook maybe, and they would take the grass and put it in there and burn it at the bottom of it. And see the grass, amen, God, God, give, God waters the grass even. Do you understand that? The dew, it waters the grass. What does dew do? <laughs> what does dew do? <laughs> I don't know how else to word it to make it sound any better either. <laughs> dew comes down to grass. It goes, it goes through it goes through the grass, it gives them nutrients, and then evaporation takes effect, and it goes up. It's an amazing process what God has. It rains and stuff, and the rain comes back down. Amen? Uh, uh, then it, it, it just cycles and cycles and cycles. God has masterminded how this earth operates and how it rolls and things like that. But he takes care. He takes care of the things that, that, uh, that even don't do anything. So how much more is he going to take care of you? 
Therefore, verse 31, take no thought, saying, what shall, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Or whether, whither, wherewithal shall we be clothed? Man, I need to have talk with King James. <laughs> wherewithal, that's a... Now, a lot of us come after service today, we're going to say, what are we going to eat? Amen? Or where are we going to eat? Right here it says, take no thought. <laughs> <clears throat> but it's talking about it's talking about people in need, amen. Verse 32, for after all these do Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all, the, all of these things. See, when I think of the Gentiles, the Gentiles, they seek, they seek which we're Gentiles, but we're grafted in uh, uh, as children of God now. But, 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 you know, before we're grafted in, we want to seek gain in the, in the physical, in the, in the material sense of things. See, God don't operate in the material. See, to us, we're not living good a lot of times if we're not, if we're not living in the abundance. See, God's abundance, uh, God meets the need, but he may not all the time meet the abundance. But... I do believe that God can give us abundance in, in some things, but he, he's required to meet the need. But the Father in him meets the abundance at times. Amen? Verse 33, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil Thereof, There's enough junk tomorrow to, to think about tomorrow, worry about today. And what do we need to do today? We need to walk in the faith. Amen? We need to walk in the faith and believe that God's got our back and he can hold us and he can take care of us. Amen? And we need to seek first <coughs> the kingdom of God. Seek it first. We put God first. We put him first. Let him hold us. All that stuff's going to take care of itself. See, God is required to meet the needs. Amen? He's required to meet the needs. But the Father in Him gives us the abundance at times. I'm so thankful that I have a Father. Amen? Uh, that loves me and gives me the abundance. Now, you say, Pastor Brad, that spoke a lot about things like eating and, 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 and clothes and, and things like that. But what about this trouble or what about this trial? It's the same concept. Seek first the kingdom of God. Don't, don't sit and worry about it because you can't fix it by worrying about it. Amen? When the devil comes against you and tries to get chaos going on, you know, now I'm not a believer in secluding away, but you know what the first thing that I've learned? See, when you're 38 years old and there's a lot of water that's been under the bridge, you kind of learn some things of how to get through some stuff. You know what I do, first of all, when stuff starts seeming chaotic? The kids getting chaotic and stuff. It, it just seems like <laughs> we went to the movies last night and uh, Kylie went to hand Josh popcorn across me and Charity and was handed it. And I went to grab the bag of popcorn I handed Josh and I hid it and dumped it. Okay? And, you know, that, that, that kind of got me a little bit. I, I didn't, I was like, <sighs> you know, I was, I was tired anyway. I'm on midnights. I was tired. I didn't have as much sleep yesterday. I didn't blow up though, but you can see it on my, she could see it on my face. She knew I was aggravated, but Went to take a drink of the pop just a little bit later. Turned it to get a drink. <laughs> and now I'm like. <sighs> but you know what I had to do? I had to keep it shut. See, that's where we miss it a lot of times. Keeping this big grease trap shut. That's one of the things that I've learned when things start getting chaotic. Shut your mouth. You know, shut your mouth. I'm trying to help you. It works. Shut your mouth till you calm down. Dad used to say, if it, or mom, or both of them, or something, if you can't say nothing nice, don't say it at all. And sometimes, Pastor Brad can't say anything nice at the time. I mean, I could, but maybe, I don't know, maybe I couldn't, but... 
when I knocked that bag of popcorn. <clears throat> we was up here on the stage this morning. You guys seen? I don't know what happened up there. I'm just saying. And, unless it got bumped or the music jarred it off or I don't know. But yeah, our first reaction is want to blame somebody. So I'm looking at Josh. He could probably see it on my face. You know, I'm like. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, here's all this stuff comes down. I mean, yeah, I just can't. You, but, but you know what? I had something. I had something twerk inside of me. Something, something a twitch inside of me. You know, uh, no, you, you, you tell him it's okay. And he didn't even do it. But see, my first reaction was to want to blame somebody. You know, we get anxious, we get fearful, we get excited about things. Our first reaction is to want to blame somebody. We've got to remember, we've got to operate out of love. Amen. Love's going to get us further than anything else will. And so many times we want to operate. We want to operate out of, out, of, out of anger, out of frustration. But the peace that passes all understanding, sometimes we lose sight of it. I do. Shut your mouth. Seek God first. And that peace will show back up. Amen. And I found out if we shut our mouth and things that we keep ourselves out of some trouble. We might save ourselves some apologies <laughs> down the, uh, uh, in, along this Christian walk. Amen. Everybody stand.